Let's get to that new polling that shows uh, the Democratic ticket of Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz remains more favorable than their Republican counterparts. The latest AP NORC poll of registered voters finds 51 percent have a favorable view of the vice president, a five point net positive and 41 percent have a favorable view of her running mate, a four point net positive. Compare that to 40 percent who have a favorable view of Donald Trump underwater by 18 points and just 33 percent view his running mate, J.D. Vance, favorably down 15 points. The AP poll also looks at the top economic issues and it finds that voters feel Harris, get this, such a dramatic, dramatic shift. Voters feel Harris is better to handle taxes on the middle class. Harris is better to handle jobs and unemployment, as well as the cost of housing. That is a radical shift. Trump has a slight edge on issues like cost of groceries and tariffs, but those are within the margin of error. I want to want to uh, go to Charlie Sykes and, and, and Charlie, there, there are two things to look at here in this AP poll. Uh, such a dramatic shift on favorability ratings. Uh, Trump upside down 18 points. Harris is actually is actually plus what is she plus three plus four um this is something plus five this is something just we've talked about on this show but this is something that people watching may not pay as close of attention to this is highly unusual not only in american politics that you have a leader who is plus five in favorability ratings in the middle of the campaign this is highly unusual in the Western democracies. We have talked about an FT article from last year that just talked about uh, the leaders all across Europe are, you know, in the 30s with favorabilities, are, are wildly upside down, and yet people like Macron still win elections. Here, uh, this tells a story, and we're going to be talking about uh, Jim Garrity, who had a, a great column yesterday talking about how Kamala Harris is always underestimated by the right. She's always been us underestimated by the left. And she somehow manages to keep winning elections, which reminds me of what Newt Gingrich said after Joe Biden once again shocked Democrats and Democrat, I mean Republicans, mm -hmm. um, by saying we always underestimate Joe Biden and uh, to our detriment. And now they're doing the same thing with Kamala Harris. Talk about all of this, her favorabilities, those, yeah. those, those numbers on the economy, which the Harris campaign has to be very happy about. They've been seeing it in internal polling for some time. And also the event you went to yesterday in Wisconsin yeah. with Liz Cheney and Kamala Harris. Yeah, well, let me start uh, right there because uh, you're absolutely right. I was uh, sitting on stage with uh, Kamala Harris and uh, and Liz Cheney, and I was thinking to myself, uh, don't don't overlook how remarkable this is. What what a uh, an extraordinary odd couple this is, but also. What a remarkable political moment when you have uh, people from you know opposite sides of the political spectrum who are uh, joining hands and saying this is not a normal election, this is not a normal contest between liberal and conservative, Republican and Democrat. Um, look at this man. Look at what he is doing. Um, and you know it really is interesting watching uh, Kamala Harris introducing herself. Uh, to to voters who I think may have been skeptical. Look, look this took place in Brookfield, Wisconsin, which is uh, the the you know beating heart of red Wisconsin. I mean, in in the Wow counties, and she really went into the belly of the beast. And I think that one of the things she's been doing since she got into this race is introducing herself. And I think that some of those numbers reflect the fact that. But voters just didn't have a, a clear vision of who she was, uh, what her personality was. Uh, you know, they may have seen YouTube clips, but she's made tremendous progress. Uh, you know, and I was able to talk to voters afterwards about uh, about their reaction. And um, she's she it feels as if she is getting she's getting her sea legs in this campaign, and I, and and more and more confident in in presenting herself. And and I have to say. And, and I can't emphasize too strongly um, how, what a bold move it is for her to be really aggressively pushing this big tent. That, you know, it is at the closing argument to say that we really are 
trying to put together a bipartisan coalition. We really are reaching out to people who may have never voted for a Democrat in their lives, who spent their whole life voting for people like Reagan and Ford and Bush and McCain and Romney and Cheney, and they're asking them to vote for Kamala Harris. So that was extraordinary. And I think that you are seeing that she's making some headway in introducing herself um, to the electorate at, at the very time when when Donald Trump continues to put on one display of his deplorability after another. Yeah, we'll see more of that in just a moment during his appearances in North Carolina yesterday. Eugene Robinson, you look at that favorability number, the new one from yeah. AP, that matters. If you're on mm -hmm. the fence, you step in, you say, which, which one of these two do I actually like? Which one do I want to see for the next four years? It's not a policy thing. It's, a, it's more of a gut thing. But to watch Vice President Harris, she knows she has to turn out her base. But as Charlie says, she's also clearly trying to give a home to voters in the Republican mm -hmm. Party, independents, who just can't bring themselves to push the button for Donald Trump. Liz Cheney is helping in that regard, but trying to expand beyond the base to make sure she wins those three states she was in yesterday, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Absolutely, Willie. Let me, let me go back to the to the Cheney-Harris appearance. Um, you know, I had the same reaction that Mika did. These Those were two just amazingly strong um, and, and powerful women on that, stage uh, and and there was I just felt really proud of that moment that that they were carrying the banner for our democracy as we know it um, and doing that so well uh, I look at those favorability numbers have to be really really welcome news to the Harris campaign uh, I'm sure they're very happy about that at the same time they at this point of the campaign they have to have you know David Plouffe and the and the and the number crunchers uh, doing all the granular work sort of county by county making sure that they know who their voters are and who they still want to get and making sure they get out to vote but uh, but that that really says a lot the contrast in favorability uh, is is usually a significant indicator. Uh, and if it is this year, uh, then that's very, very welcome news for Vice President Harris. It's also an extraordinary effort by the vice president to try to win over these Republicans. Uh, they spent a lot of time and resources there, which on one hand shows just how close the election is, but also the campaign clearly sees an opening. Caddy, let's talk about the economic numbers, though. Um, writ large, that poll suggests that Americans still relatively unhappy with how things are going. About 60-odd percent of Americans say they don't feel good about the economy. That said, that is an 11-point improvement, as we can see there from a year ago. So that is trending in the right direction. And then when we see the individual categories, though, as, as Joe Amica mentioned at the top, Harris has really made inroads that she's ahead of Trump in a few categories and pulled even in others or narrow, narrow deficits. You know, for so many voters, including potentially those disaffected Republicans, the economy is going to be the make or break issue. This seems like it's heading in the right direction here in the campaign's final fortnight for Harris. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting how many polls have um, asked people both about the economy and about inflation, as if kind of separating out those two issues. And when you talk to voters, it's really the inflation numbers that are bothering people the most. I mean, you know, out in somewhere like Nevada, the New York Times has just done very good research on this, on reporting on this, where rent prices have gone up by multiples since COVID and people are really struggling. And the one defining issue in that state for people in the Las Vegas area is is rent. And so it's interesting to see there Kamala Harris pulling ahead on rent. This had been a concern for the campaign that if people were that dissatisfied with prices, they would blame the Biden administration. And by extension, they would blame Kamala Harris and she would get pinned with this. But either she's done a good job of separating herself sufficiently from um, President Biden in the last four years where we've had this inflation or her proposals on things like giving $25,000, as she now repeated a lot, to first time home buyers, that's having some impact, too, on people who are looking at housing as their biggest concern. It, it, as a, I'd be interested to see how much in the last two weeks, especially with this jobs report that's going to come out just before Election Day, and how that might affect the mood of people on the economy, how much she leans mm -hmm. into the economy in the last two weeks.